Good evening and welcome to the Cape Elizabeth School Board meeting for Tuesday, March 9th, 1999. The first item on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Special dispensation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next on our agenda is adjustments to this evening's agenda. Yeah, I have done. Uh, we'll move on to approval of February school board uh, minutes. There were minutes from a regular meeting of February 9th and the two special meetings from February 23rd and 26th. Any comments, concerns about those? Okay, we'll move on to comments from our high school representatives. Jeff and Alicia. Hi, I'm Alicia, the junior, and this is Jeff. Um, we have several things to report on that happened and events that are coming up. Um, MEAs take place next week for the junior class, and that's going to be seven days this year instead of four. Um, the One Act festivals are coming up this weekend, and we're, we're hosting, um, how many schools? I think three schools are competing in it. Um, the show for the town and for anyone who wants to see it um, is this, this Wednesday and Thursday. Um, progress reports came out this past weekend, this past week, I believe, um, and students came back from Spain. Um, they came back the night of the 5th, and they said that it was a really good experience. They experienced their culture, and um, they had a good time. Good evening. I'm Jeff Butterworth, a high school senior. Um, I'm really pleased that uh, already it's March and I've had nothing to bring you but good news, so here's some more of it. Um, we have some, uh, some teams and events to congratulate uh, this evening, certainly, uh, from the past uh, competitions and uh, sporting events. Um, first off, hockey. Uh, Cape Hockey uh, received the title of state champions after they defeated uh, Orono on March 2nd up in uh, central Maine. That was a, uh, a, big, uh, a big win for, for uh, Cape. I, I can't remember how long it's been since they've had a state title, but uh, they've certainly earned it with all their hard work. Fifteen years, Jeff. Fifteen years. Well, at least they're getting, they, they've put it all back on track. Um, the, uh, the fans uh, of, of the team uh, were actually noted uh, by, by um, most, of the, most of the spectators there to be the most, uh, you know, gung-ho about it and uh, certainly the most well-behaved of any, of any spectators sitting there. So Cape Elizabeth gets another... Another good point on that. We have good reputation. Um, Mark Joyce uh, individually uh, won the, the title of champion for the shot put at the uh, state indoor track and field uh, competition uh, just this past season, uh, which is, a congratu uh, which is uh, an enormous um, uh, win for him, and uh, he, he deserves extreme congratulations. It's not often that individual efforts are recognized in the, uh, in the shadows of uh, such great events of teams. Um, the jazz band, uh, Cape Elizabeth Jazz Band, has had many competitions recently. Uh, we just won uh, the Berkeley competition down in uh, the Berkeley College of Arts in Boston. Uh, we took first in our class, and several awards were given out uh, here. Alan Khan, Alan Khan uh, the bass player from Jazz Band 2, was given an award of outstanding musicianship. Chris Gagne of tr on trombone was given an out uh, award of outstanding musicianship for Combo 2. Tim Butterworth was given uh, outstanding musicianship awards for Jazz Band 1 and Combo 1. Uh, actually, Tim and I shared the award for Jazz Band 1. The judges couldn't make up their minds. They figured, we were brothers, we can share. Uh, <laughs> uh, Tim also received uh, an award of um, musicianship at the evening ceremony uh, for uh, individuals um, in the gathering after all the uh, competitions were uh, completed. And I received an award at the finalist ceremony after the, after the night show in which our band and uh, other bands of other classes competed, the other champions. 
Um, the basketball did well. Uh, it's, it's unfortunate that they didn't make it and we're all, we're all uh, sorry for them. But uh, it's, it's an incredible accomplishment that they made it all the way to states and they performed admirably as did the fans once again. Um, uh, in uh, future news, jazz, uh, the jazz band will have more competitions coming up. We have the states, uh, state jazz competition uh, uh, following the districts, which occurred just this past Tuesday of last week. Uh, and that will be in Nokomis uh, from, April 9th, uh, from March 19th to March 20th. And uh, we have a cabaret night for all those interested in hearing what we performed and how well we do. Um, uh, this April 6th and 8th for anyone who would like to uh, come and uh, hear some good music and participate in uh, a festive event. So this is all the uh, news from the high school. I'm glad it's been good. Any questions? Questions? Any yeah. Would you convey to the students that had Sunday been a school day, I would have called off school. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll let them know that, uh, right. that, that at least your support is behind them. <laughs> I, I had the opportunity to hear your jazz band uh, last Tuesday, and uh, it's it's quite a special group. And if you haven't got a chance to hear them, you know, get there on April sixth and eighth. Yep, that's right. what, what time are they? I believe that will be at seven thirty at, at the at the uh, Cape Elizabeth uh, High School cafeteria. Mr. Dawson, did you? Have a <laughs> yeah. No. Ecstasy, you know, can make you make you forget. <laughs> Other questions or comments? I just wanted to build on what Keith said. I had I also was at South Portland High School last week when the groups were playing and I heard several of the other groups and they all sounded good. Well, there's a lot of talent around the area. <laughs> I met all of the Cape Elizabeth groups. Oh well. <laughs> they all sounded good. Everybody sounded good. And we do appreciate hearing good news. Oh well so I appreciate giving we'll continue it. the trend. We'll be we'll be happy with that. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. All right. Thanks. We'll now hear from our middle school representatives, uh, Marianne and Amelia. Hi, I'm Amelia Wiggins, and this is Marianne. And um, tomorrow the civil rights team is going to Augusta for a conference, and the student council is going to St. Joseph's College tomorrow for the Southern Maine Leadership Convention. And last week has been very busy for our music groups. Um, there was a multi-middle school jazz festival on the 2nd in South Portland. And last weekend, the honors festival for band and chorus um, performed. And all chorus night for high school and middle school singers is on March 16th. Um, the talent show is on March 24th. And we've got a lot of people performing for that this year. Uh, the seventh graders will go to the Boston Museum of Science on the 30th, and um, we'll be doing some introductory work for that this week and next week, and doing some games and stuff, like laser tag when we're there. Um, Oz is in rehearsal and underway, the, our play, and all the parts have been picked, and there's rehearsal pretty much every afternoon after school. And that will be on the 8th and the 9th of April. Um, the second track meet was last Friday, and the Cape Girls won, and the boys also did very, very well. Uh, the next meet is this Thursday for that. Also, the jazz band um, perform is performing on April 6th for the middle school. Hi. Um, our annual magazine drive started on February 23rd and will end this Friday. Um, it, we haven't been getting quite the responses previous years, but we're doing very well with it. Uh, the MEAs and CATs are coming up. The MEAs from the 15th through 23rd for the 8th graders, and the CATs are from the 15th to the 17th for the 5th, 7th, 5th 6th, and 7th graders. Uh, the national Spanish exam was taken by 8th graders on March 2nd, and the National French exam will be taken on the 18th. Uh, we will be having a dance on the 26th of this month 
which is also the same day as the parent-teacher conferences and the early release day. <laughs> Uh, the 8th graders will be getting the recommendations for high school classes on the 16th and the trimester ends this Friday and the report cards will be coming out on the 19th. Any questions? Questions? Looks like not. Thank you very much. Good job. Okay, uh, next we uh, move to communications. Are there any communications from the board? Just a quick one. <clears throat> Quickly, I'd like to take an opportunity to thank and congratulate all of the students and coaches who participated and faculty <coughs> advisors who participated in winter athletic and co-curricula. You all brought a great deal of pride to Cape Elizabeth. Also, to the spectators, as was mentioned before, were truly outstanding. I know uh, Peter received very positive comments from the MPA about the behavior of our spectators. I think we had a real good winter season, both in athletics and co-curricular, and I'm hoping we do the same thing in the spring. Thank you. John? Yes, John. Uh, take a minute. I've placed these containers in front of each of the school board members and Mary Bruns and the superintendent. This was called a vial of life. This is a program that was started by the Cape Elizabeth Police Department and taken over uh, and given some assistance by the rescue, Evelyn Cox and Officer Carson. They've asked the Lions Club to help them get this circulated throughout the town. And it's basically if a person has medications that they're on, that they write them down, <coughs> excuse me, put them in the vial, place them in their freezer, and put the decal on the front of the refrigerator. That way, if the rescue has to come into your home, they'll have access to your, your medications. I've placed extra uh, containers up in the back of the room, and we have an ample supply between the rescue and the police department and the Lions. So if anybody's in need of them, they can either call Evelyn Cox, Officer Carson, or myself. Thank you. Thank you, John. Other communications from the board? Um, I did want to report out that uh, yesterday on March 8th, um, the superintendent, uh, Beth Currier, and I uh, did have an opportunity to address the state's joint le legislative committee on education and basically expressed our support for Bill LD1215. Um, and uh, Bill LT, LD1215 is uh, an act regarding the eligibility of a citizen to serve as a school board member. It was presented by Representative Marvin. Um, the bill prohibits a person or the spouse of a person suing a school board the school administrative unit or a school within the jurisdiction of the board from serving on that board if the suit could result in material gain. Um, also in attendance uh, was uh, board member John Ridge um, who spoke in opposition to the bill. Any other communications? Seeing none, um, I'm gonna move on to the superintendent's report. It's the time of year and we need to think about next year's school calendar. First meeting of that committee has been scheduled for March 31st in the Jordan Conference Room and that will be at 315. The three board members on that committee are John Ridge, Beth Currier, and Marie Prager. And there are also members of the staff, a representative from the teachers union, and representatives from the administration. Would you repeat the date again, please? Uh, the 31st of March. It's a Wednesday at 315 in the conference. We would like to think we'll have a draft ready for you to look at at the April board meeting. Cynthia, do we accept input from the student council at the high school? We accept input from everyone and anyone, right. And would encourage it, the sooner the better. Obviously, if we have it for that first meeting, it would be most helpful. Okay. Uh, we've had one resignation, Hannah Ashley, who is a social <coughs> studies teacher at the high school. And you don't really need to take action on it, but certainly we, she's been a valuable contributing member to the faculty, and we will accept that resignation with regret. Okay. Um, this month, uh, reporting for each of the schools uh, will be the assistant principals uh, rather than the principals, giving them their opportunity to share the limelight. And uh, we'll start at the high school with Dwight. I told them they could each have a half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> and Tom is editing his down because he had an hour. So. Well, thank you very much because, you know, um, <clears throat> when you 
told me that the assistant principals were going to be presenting, I immediately started thinking of all the ways I could mm, get the word brevity in here. Uh, <clears throat> you know, the high school tradition. Brevity so or levity? Yeah, but brevity, brevity, you know. Peter's middle initial is B, you, you know. Um, no. <laughs> However, then I sat down and I said, oh my gosh, <clears throat> we have an awful lot to report and uh, began to feel quite guilty because um, it is very difficult to be brief when you have so much going on at the high school. Um, I want to thank uh, Jeff and Alicia for covering a great deal of the uh, extracurricular, co-curricular and sporting activities. Um, a couple things I'd mention <clears throat> in addition to the wonderful results we've had from the, um, um, the sports that they've mentioned, uh, ice hockey, um, basketball and indoor track. We also, of course, wrapped up a wonderful season uh, with the swim team and with the uh, Nordic ski team. And each of those teams had individuals that set um, individual records and state records. So we had an absolutely outstanding winter season with uh, a good number of students involved. On the co-curricular side, uh, in addition to um, the jazz um, band, we also are finishing up the speech and debate season. And uh, last Saturday night, in the snowstorm in, uh, in Orno, the uh, debaters um, all qualified for the uh, final competition, which is going to be held this Friday night in um, Brunswick. They made it back about 11 o'clock, very slowly, <clears throat> coming down the turnpike in the whiteout. Uh, a couple of names I'd like to mention, just because uh, they've had a, a long and uh, dedicated season. Uh, on the debate team, uh, Lincoln-Douglas debaters that have qualified for the states, uh, Alex Watson, Andy Rowe, and Andy Clough. And on the policy side, uh, teams of Rebecca Bulos and Brian White, Tom Preddy and Katie Bowen, and uh, Liza Williams and Katie Wendell, who are our novice debaters. Of course, we also have already qualified for the national tournaments, and we'll have, um, I think, uh, four or five, no, actually make that seven if we include speech, going to the CFLs in Chicago for the National Speech and Debate Competition. Um, <clears throat> on the academic side, um, a lot of things are happening. A lot of things have happened. Just a quick note, as Alicia mentioned, for the parents who are watching, progress reports did go home um, last Friday. No news is usually good news, but you might want to check. Uh, last Wednesday evening, we also hosted the orientation meeting for the eighth grade students and their parents. And um, I think it was the only time I can remember when the cafeteria had standing room only. We had a wonderful turnout, and uh, we were very pleased to see the number of students uh, who were there. Uh, I want to thank um, Nancy and Carmen and the uh, guidance uh, folks at the middle school, as well as the uh, middle school teachers, for helping to make the transition from eighth grade to the high school uh, runs so smoothly. We'll also be uh, having our natural helpers visit the uh, middle school over the coming months to uh, talk to the eighth graders and answer any questions they might have. And we certainly appreciate the parents' interest and support. It was a wonderful turnout. The eighth graders will be doing their pre-registration for uh, course selection for the coming year. And the deadline <clears throat> for that is uh, March 26th. We're in the process of pre-registration for all of our students at the high school. And uh, for the f parents who may be watching, um, if you haven't heard from your son or daughter yet, this would be a good time to engage them in conversation. Their um, course selection should be done this Friday. Major news at the high school for uh, academics, of course, is the MEA testing that's coming up next week and the following week. And let me take just a minute to go over that schedule, um, clear up any confusion that might be out there. Uh, it is seven days of testing uh, this year, and that's not quite double, but it has been in the past, but it's up significantly. We've already had uh, two days of testing of writing prompts back in November. So this is a significant commitment of time, and we take it very seriously and try to create an environment at the high school where students will do their very, very best. Uh, it is a long stretch, however, and so what we have done is uh, broken the testing up into two weeks. Starting next week, we'll have MEA testing for juniors on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, regular classes will be ongoing for freshmen, sophomores, and seniors. Then we'll have three days of regular classes, Friday, Monday, and Tuesday. And then we'll go back into a testing mode the next week on 
Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, when the uh, seniors will show up at 940, and freshmen and sophomores will be taking the tests that they've taken over the number, uh, past few years. Juniors will be finishing the MEAs, um, and then we'll be done. I think the, the bit of news there that we remembered probably most closely by seniors is they don't have to show up until 940, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of the following week. Um, let's see. Uh, one other quick uh, note on the one acts that's, uh, that are going to be hosted this weekend. Um, that is really a student organized, sponsored, run, a hosted um, show. There are 10 other schools invited uh, participating. We'll have about 300 students there. Uh, they host a dance. Um, they have a dinner. Uh, they really put on a, a tremendous um, program. And uh, it's terrific entertainment. Not only is it open to the public, but I would actually encourage the public to come if they want to have a good time. The uh, pre-one-act performance for the CAPE people, uh, our, our students, is uh, tomorrow night, Wednesday evening. And then Friday evening, you could also see CAPE Elizabeth as well as um, a number of other schools starting at 6.30. CAPE is scheduled to go on at 8.30. Any questions? Questions for Dwight? Uh, just a quick one about the MEA. Uh, how long each day are the students testing? Uh, two hours. Okay. And we rotate the schedule so that they don't miss the same uh, periods throughout the day, which makes it a little bit confusing, but that way we, we can basically maintain a normal, as normal a uh, program as possible. John? In the past, Dwight, you were most helpful to me when I chaired the Lions Speak Out in the high school. At this time, I would like to ask your assistance. Would you please ask somebody in the English department to contact Benson Daner if they wish to do that again this year? We're up against the time frame, mm -hmm. and we'd greatly appreciate hearing from somebody. My pleasure. That was a, that's a good program, and, and our students appreciate the, the uh, scholarships they've won over the years. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Thank you, Thank you Dwight. Um, middle school, Carmen? Good evening. I did have a long report, but I checked with the young ladies first, and they did most of it for me, so I'll only take a couple minutes. But um, you heard about the MEAs, uh, so I'll just continue with that. Ours will be seven days in a row. They'll run till about 10.15 each morning, and Nancy and the team leaders created a, an alternative schedule so the students don't miss the same uh, periods, and, and we'll rotate that. Um, the big thing for the middle school this month is the continuation that Nancy reported to you last month was the homework discussion that we started uh, during the faculty meetings and that will continue this faculty meeting. And uh, what will happen is the faculty will break out in small groups and as a result of the last meeting there were three issues that, were, that came forward uh, and one was uh, the meaningfulness of homework. The other was how teachers respond to that homework, and the third one was uh, should it be coordinated, and if it should, how should it be coordinated? So they're going to break out into three groups, and they'll, uh, they'll come back with that, and hopefully by the time they're done, we'll have a, a whole school consensus on what meaningful homework is for, for Cape Elizabeth Middle School and, and go from there. The... Um, other issue that I have here that, that the girls didn't, the young ladies didn't um, comment on, was that Suzanne, Janelle, Kathleen, Reva, Conrad, Berthium, and Susan Dana will be attending the Foreign Language Association of Maine Conference um, Friday the 12th. And uh, Susan Dana is going to be a presenter at that conference, and the title is Rock en Español, or Rock Music. And, in Spain, uh, which I guess ought to be pretty interesting. They're going to talk about, uh, they're comparing it to the British invasion of the 60s, and, and they're, going to, they're going to do it on the Spanish side. And uh, finally, um, Nancy uh, and Lyle Kramer will meet with incoming uh, fifth grade parents in regard to accelerated programs on the 10th of this month. 
And um, just beyond that, on a, on a personal note, this is the two-thirds of the year through in my first year here at Cape, and just want to tell you what a joy it's been so far for me working with the professional staff that we have and, and a well-organized school and, and great kids. Couldn't want any better, and uh, just telling you it's great. Any questions? I Thank you. We're all set. Thank you. We're Carmen. glad you're here too. And yes, <laughs> big glad you're here. Yes. We Thank hear, you. Hear good things. I, with about the you. comments my colleagues have, have been making, I wonder what kind of reputation I've developed. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to uh, Pond Cove, Marla. And we're glad that Marla is here. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Good evening. Feels like it's been a while since we've had an opportunity to report, but um, I think I'd like to start with letting you know that the transition with community services being gone down in the kindergarten wing has gone very well, even with the big kids there now. Uh, we haven't run into any difficulties, so we're pleased with that. The SQR report, we're still awaiting its <coughs> arrival. Um, we're, we did, as you know, receive some verbal information at the end of their visit, but we're anxious for the documenting uh, documents and the supporting evidence for the questions that they pose to us so that we can begin to have our conversations and begin our planning around those. We, too, are planning for the MEA testing, which will begin the week of the 5th, March 15th. Um, it will run two weeks for us. The California testing will occur for second and third graders beginning March 22nd. That is a one-week testing situation. Our conversation regarding looping continues. We have um, six to eight staff members who are giving strong consideration to volunteering to start that program or that process next year. Um, we would have uh, looping opportunities grades one through four and it would be for teachers who are volunteering to do this and parents who wish to participate in the program. So we need further discussions about process and, and all the um, questions that arise around that. But that's moving along well. The uh, PCA, PCPA held a budget information night last Thursday. We had six school committee members there, and we had uh, three council members who gave up their time to help inform our parents. It was attended by about 15 to 20 parents who had questions about the process, the budget process, and priorities, how our priorities were established, and that went very well, and we thank you for your time. Uh, we have a visiting author coming on March 16th. We've been anxiously awaiting his arrival and preparing for Robert Blake. He'll be visiting with us on the 16th. And the last event I have to talk about is the Spaghetti Supper, which is going to be held Friday night, and a sock hop following. So it sounds like a good time. Any questions? Yes. Um, Jen? You're talking about getting looping ready for next year? We're talking, we would start with a new group of children next year. Children that are in classes this year would not be participating in a looping situation for next year. It would be a new group of classes. So when classes are developed for next year, it would be with a new group, and those children would be part of the looping process. So and it's strictly voluntary. The first year. Correct. Looping, right. Thank you. And um, you said you were having further um, informational meetings. Right. We're still those scheduled. No, it's part of an ongoing discussion with our staff. Other questions or comments from Marla? Thank you very much. You're welcome. We move on now to committee reports, uh, starting with the Finance Subcommittee. Keith. Uh, we met earlier tonight in the Jordan Conference Room, uh, discussed uh, the 1930s building renovation uh, report and project. And it looks like with all the work uh, completed now, where we have a, a, a balance of our account of almost $36,000, and this, this amount will go right back into the general fund. Uh, congratulations to Ernie and Ensure Community Services for uh, keeping that project on track. That, that's, that's great. Uh, we discussed a resolve uh, that has been endorsed by the Maine School Boards Association uh, Board of Directors uh, regarding education funding. And uh, I'm not going to read this whole resolve, uh, but uh, basically it's a, 
it's a resolve that they're asking school boards to uh, pass uh, that's uh, urging the state to return to uh, their 55% funding formula for uh, the state funding for uh, school budgets. Uh, currently, Cape Elizabeth's at about 20%. Uh, uh, so I guess I would like to make a motion, if that's appropriate, mm -hmm. uh, that we as a school board accept uh, this resolve and, uh, and, uh, and sign off on it that we support the issues on here. It's a motion. Second. Any discussion about the resolve? It was something that we've all had an opportunity to read. It is, it's, uh, and agree to. Um, it is very lengthy. Otherwise, um, Keith would present it. Uh, seeing no questions or concerns, um, all those in favor? It's seven zero. Thank you. Um, uh, just a little bit more here. Mm -hmm. uh, we we uh, reviewed the uh, food service report. Uh, we're maintaining about a $9,000 uh, student debt for the amount of money that's uh, still owed to the school for, for lunches. Uh, and we're also running about an $8,000 uh, budget deficit, and that seems to be uh, uh, happening on a regular basis uh, from year to year. <coughs> We've asked, uh, the Finance Committee has asked the business manager to uh, uh, create a proposal uh, to begin next year of, of uh, increasing uh, some of the pricing structure of, of the school meals and so forth. Uh, the, that is one area of our budget that should be a zero uh, based uh, and uh, we're going to continue to work on that. And that was about it for the Finance Committee. Okay, thanks. Um, policy Subcommittee, Kevin. Policy Subcommittee met on February 11th immediately after uh, some superintendent search business. So it was a relatively brief meeting. We are discussing the uh, school board policy as to recommended class size. Not so much as to recommend the class size, but as to putting into place a vehicle and administrative guideline um, as to when we should gather and look at that as an issue. Um, we will be revisiting that at the next meeting. That is all I have to report on that meeting. This week's meeting of the policy subcommittee has been postponed since almost no one is available to, uh, to be, uh, be at that meeting. We will be rescheduling that uh, not for next week, but the following week and emails will go out to all the members uh, tomorrow or uh, Thursday at the latest. Okay. I'm going to ask Kevin a question. Yes. What, mm -hmm. What's going to be on your agenda on that that date? Anything specific that you're going to take up? Well, we're taking up um, the uh, the class size recommendations and the administrative guidelines first. We have a special ed policy we're looking at as to where to what level we will delegate certain authorities to commit um, resources in special ed situations. And there are a number of other policies that we're going to look at. And I believe that we are also going to take a look, John, you brought up a policy that we had adopted regarding when we evaluate um, um, tempo substitute teachers uh, versus when we give them an increase. So we are going to be taking a look at that and see uh, we're going to get some uh, data back on uh, how that all works. Okay. That was the purpose of my question. So I was wondering, because I had just jotted a quick note. And so I'll make a note that's going to be next week, right? Not next week, the following yeah. week, assuming we can assemble everybody. Unfortunately, it's becoming increasingly difficult to schedule meetings. Our administrators are extraordinarily busy. Thank you. And um, Kevin, in our packet this evening, we have the final copies of the special ed policies as well as the critical incident yes. policy. Um, OK. Good. These they were all adopted at the second reading last meeting. Those are just, just, just so that board members are aware in the yeah. packet, those things need to go into right. the policy book. Okay. Somewhere in the same vicinity in your packet, you have a special education article that if you have not read it, I encourage you to read it. It's very relevant. Right. It was written by someone that we know. Yes, that's correct. Right. Um, 
Okay, uh, we'll move on to an update on the superintendent search. Beth. Um, good evening. During the week of uh, February, let me just get the right date, February 22nd, um, three board members and four administrators, and our three principals and Claire Labrie, our director of special ed, uh, did two site visits to the sites of both of our finalists. We had wonderful days at both places. And um, I want to thank everybody for putting in all that time and then go back and say I want to thank everybody that was on the screening committee, which were two community members, Gary Weaver and Debbie Cushing. We had two teachers, Ray Cooper and Kelly Hassan. We had our three principals and Claire Labrie and then the full board. And um, the process is now over. <coughs> And we do have a nomination tonight, and um, I am with great pleasure going to nominate um, Dr. Thomas Forsella as our superintendent starting July 1st, 1999. And I just want to give a little bit of background um, for the public. Uh, Dr. Forsella has been in the superintendent of schools in the Wells of Gunquit for the last five years. Before that, he was an assistant superintendent in uh, Massachusetts for two years, and before that he was a principal <coughs> in Massachusetts for five years, and before that he had other teaching and assistant principal um, experience. Uh, the whole board and the administrators and everyone is just thrilled that Dr. Forsella will be um, joining us here. So if I can move right to new business, I will make that nomination, mm -hmm. I'll make a motion. I'd like to make a motion to nominate Dr. Thomas Porcella as our superintendent starting July 1st, 1999 to a three-year term. Second. Second by John. Questions or comments from the board? And we do have resumes available in the audience. Anyone has to? Okay, Nancy has comments. I, th I think, no, go ahead. Um, comments from any board members? Speaking on behalf of the board, we are just uh, absolutely delighted um, that Tom uh, has accepted our offer. Uh, it's a great match, and uh, we're, we're really looking forward uh, to working with Tom. John. I'd like to publicly thank uh, the young lady sitting on my right. I, I think that she put in a lot of hours putting all these resumes together, keeping us on track for the meetings, and making sure we had the proper information. So a deep debt of gratitude goes to Mary, because she's the one who, along with Cynthia, but pull this all together. And while I'm speaking, maybe Cynthia could share with the community what uh, the doctor will be receiving for compensation. All right, the, the annual salary for the first year is $85,000, and obviously the salary for the subsequent two years will be negotiated. I also don't want to go um, without mentioning the role that uh, Beth Currier played, um, who served as the chairperson of the selection committee, an incredible amount of time and energy um, and um, some cracking of the whip for some of the rest of us in terms of really just moving out there and, and getting out into the market, uh, doing a good job in terms of um, uh, making uh, known our need for superintendent and basically keeping us all structured and organized. It was, it was just a, an outstanding process. I've heard um, uh, very, very positive feedback from our administrative team and from faculty. So. Um, Thank you also, Beth. You're welcome. And Mary and Cynthia were great helps. Thank, thank them for all their work. <laughs> yeah. Moving on now to a vote. All those in favor? 7-0. Yeah. And we'll move, continue on with um, our new business, uh, consideration of the superintendent's nomination to athletic fee positions. Right. This is spring, or almost spring, so we have a lot of spring nominations. <clears throat> At the middle school, Rebecca Williams to be the middle school girls lacrosse coach. David Reed to be the eighth grade softball coach. Chris Jackson to be the seventh grade boys lacrosse coach. And those are new coaches. Also at the middle school returning, Jerry McQueenie is eighth grade baseball. Ted Ray is seventh grade baseball. Wayne Bridgham is seventh grade softball. And Kevin McDonald is eighth grade boys lacrosse. At the high school, new coaches, Bill Brown, assistant tennis, William Rabadou, assistant varsity softball, Tony Mina, assistant JV baseball. Do you want to move on to also co-curricular positions? Uh, that's a different item, so why don't we Okay. Um, do I have a motion on the athletic fee positions? I'll move. 
I move we accept the uh, superintendent's recommendations for the athletic uh, positions. Second, Marie. Questions, comments? I just have one quick question, Keith. Uh, with Rebecca Williams doing middle school lacrosse and being a Pond Cove teacher, how does the timing work in the day with the middle school students being out at 2.20 and she having classroom commitments till later? Uh, well, two years ago when she did it, we started the practice at 3 o'clock. So do those kids just stay around but school? We'll, we'll have to work out a way to take care of them at 2.30 or 3.00. She did an outstanding job. I was we really happy to have that. Okay. Okay. Any comment? No. Yes. I think we were most fortunate in having uh, Bill Robidoux step forward and volunteer his time as the assistant varsity softball team. Uh, maybe not too many of you know his background, but if you get a chance, I want to get a little insight as to what he's accomplished in reference to <coughs> coaching different teams. And uh, he's a young man in, in my age bracket. I think we're most fortunate to, to have him available. Other comments? Seeing none. Uh, I, did, I think uh, John brought up a point. I did want to mention that William Robidu and Tony Miner are both volunteers, so we are very appreciative to people who come forward and do mm -hmm. that. All those in favor? 7 0. Now moving on to the right, co curricular <coughs> positions. One co curricular fee position, and that's Judy Ferranti for Pond Cove Drama and Music. And this is an activity she's been involved in. She is a staff member, and we just need to officially mm -hmm. nominate her. Is there a motion? Can I move that we accept the superintendent's nomination for the co-curricular fee position. Second. Jen, uh, questions, comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. Um, consideration of proposed extended baseball trip. All right, we have two extended trips. One is for baseball and one is for lacrosse. You had informa backup information mm -hmm. in your packet. Hopefully that all is quite self-explanatory. I know Andy is here and Keith is here if you have questions, but I recommend that you approve both of those. Is there a motion? Kevin? I move that we accept the superintendent's recommendation that we authorize both of the extended trips, one for the varsity baseball team and one for the varsity boys lacrosse team. Second. Marie? John, comment? Just out of uh, curiosity, is March 26th a half day or an early release day? Yes. So there's no conflict in school hours, right? Other questions about the proposed trips? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. Um, before we adjourn to our budget workshop um, with pre presentations on athletics, technology, and that's it. Um, let me just review the dates to remember coming up. Um, the school board uh, policy subcommittee meeting that was scheduled for Thursday, March 11th has been postponed. That'll be another two weeks out with details forthcoming. The school board workshop meeting on March 23rd at 7 p.m. at the high school library, and that is the fiscal year 2000 school budget as a focus and topic. Um, also, there is, I jotted March 31st, is the uh, meeting of the calendar committee, and that's at 3.15 in the afternoon, and I, I forgot Jordan what, conference. and the Jordan Conference Room. Uh, the town council finance committee meeting is on April 7th at 7.30 in the council chambers where they will be reviewing the community services budget. Uh, finance, our regular finance subcommittee meeting on April 13th at 6.30 in the Jordan Conference Room, followed by our regular school board meeting at 7.30 here in the chambers. And then the town, lastly, the Town Council Finance Committee and School Board um, meeting April 14th um, at 7.30, and that is in the council chambers, and that's when the council reviews the school budget. <coughs> Am I missing anything? If not, then um, I'll look for. Can I ask a question? On yes, what John. date will we vote the budget? In the April the meeting? The 13th? Yes, your April board meeting. Hopefully, <coughs> board meeting. hopefully we'll be done and you can vote. We will, we will hopefully be prepared uh, for the, the school board to approve our submission on April 13th. Thank you. At our regular school board meeting. Um, I guess now I'm looking for a motion for adjournment to our board workshop. So moved. Seconded. 
by Jen. Questions, comments, all those in favor? 7-0. Thank you very much.